You were gone for quite a while. Hernardo likes to talk. That he does. But I trust he did more than talk. Impressive. I'm rather fond of it myself. I've given you the skills. Leonardo's given you the blade. All that remains is the deed. Where can I find Uberto? According to my girls, he'll be attending an unveiling tonight of Verrocchio's latest work. It will be held at the Santa Croce Cloister. Watch over my mother and sister while I'm away. Of course, Ezio. As if they were my own. Uberto Alberti. Trusted friend of the Auditore family. According to the history books, this guy was a saint. He prosecuted murderers, rapists, the worst criminals. One of the best lawyers in Italy, he won every case, in spite of the fact that he was self-taught. Now, I found a back door into the Templar's database server. I've been combing it for some kind of smoking gun. I found it. Apparently, Uberto's family was evicted by the Medici Bank. Uberto's been aching for revenge ever since. And the Templars promised him support. Ezio's father was standing in the way, and Uberto was jealous of his influence over the Florentine government. Two birds with one stone, isn't it? It looks like Uberto used his election to the Signoria as his opportunity to strike. Again with this? You have overstepped your bounds, Uberto. Who are you to speak of bounds? You, who have crowned yourself Lorenzo di Medici, Principe of Firenze. I've done no such thing. Of course not. Ever innocent. How convenient. At least now, we see how far your reach extends, which is to say, nowhere at all. It has proved a valuable lesson for me and my allies. Yes. Your allies, the Pazzi. Is that what this is about? Be careful with your words, Lorenzo. You might attract the wrong sort of attention. Good evening, compagnero. To you as well. I trust you're enjoying yourselves. Indeed, a nice distraction from that nasty business with the auditorium. And to think I once thought of Giovanni as a brother. Don't blame yourself. How could you have known what evils he had? I say we strike that traitor's name from the record books. Let history forget he ever even existed. Hmm. Yes, I should. If you'll excuse me for a moment. Uberto! 
a moment of your time? Anything for you, Beatrice. <laughs> so, tell us, how does it feel to be a hero? Please, I am no such thing. As Gonfalonieri, it is my duty to ensure that the city of Firenze remains a shining beacon of justice. Corruption and its ill shall find no purchase here so long as I am in control. You are a treasure, Uberto. I hope Lorenzo recognizes that. Yes, our great leader, Lorenzo. <clears throat> I'll see you ladies later. I was just telling the others about the execution. I mean, no offense, but what if they did not act enough? You can rest easy, friends. I am confident that this treachery began and ended with the auditorium. What of the other side? Ezio, was it? The child poses no danger. Soft hands and an even softer head. He'll be caught and executed before the week is out. Oh, don't let us keep you, Berto. We just wanted to say hello. Evening to you, Don Palonier. Is everything to your satisfaction? Do you even need to ask? Of course. Accept our thanks for this evening and for helping to keep Firenze safe. I always had my doubts about the Auditore. Where did the family even come from? To gain such wealth and, and prestige in just a single generation. And the children with their odd names, always making trouble. No surprise given the company that father kept. Whores and thieves, I swear it. Indeed. It is clear now he sought to undermine the city, to overturn all we've worked so hard to build. But thanks to you, that's over now. You! You would have done the same. To save the ones you love. Yes, I would. And I have. The Auditorio are not dead. I'm still here. Me, Ezio, Ezio Auditore. Assassino! <laughs> My love, I put these thoughts to paper in the hope that I might one day have the courage to share them with you. In time, you'll no doubt learn that I betrayed Giovanni, labeled him a traitor, and sentenced him to die. History will likely judge this to have been a matter of politics and greed. Know that it was not hate that forced my hand, but fear. When the Medici robbed us of all we owned, I found myself afraid. For you? for our son, for the future. What hope in this world for a man without proper means? They offered me money, land, and title in exchange for my collaboration. And so this is how I came to betray my closest friend. However unspeakable the act, it seemed necessary at the time. And even now, looking back, I see no other way. Vieri di Pazzi, the youngest member of the second most notorious Florentine banking family, this kid knew how to burn right through his father's money. Outside of spending sprees involving weaponry, exotic animals and clothes, he was fiercely competitive. Vieri hosted races of all kinds, boating, horseback riding, running, all of them rigged of course. 
And get this, if through some amazing stroke of luck he ever lost, he'd invite the winner's entire family over for a victory dinner and serve them a meal to die for. Ezio, what are you doing here? Taking responsibility. Vieri troubles you because of me. <laughs> Vieri troubles us because he's a Templar, and we are assassins. Either way, I wish to help. Va bene. Then listen close. First, we must find a way inside the city, though it seems Vieri expects us. He has sealed the gates and sent his men to guard them. Fortunately for us, the city is larger than his host. The southern gate suffers for it. So this is where we'll strike, Pronti. All right, Ezio. Here's how it is going to work. My men and I will distract the guards. Once we have engaged them, get yourself over the wall and find a way to open the gate. Take these throwing knives. Use them to dispatch the archers. I'm ready when you are. Then let us begin. Al attacco! I want you to distract those guards and keep them from raising the alarm. Hopefully it will buy me enough time to find and silence Vieri. Va bene. Wait, Nipote. Take a few of my men with you, just to be safe. Come join me once they're dealt with. What's Vieri up to now? Where to? No one knows. But something has him on edge. How else to explain all the patrols? I'll signal we'll again when you should follow. Instead, he's turned us into nursemaids. And what? Shooting his mouth off again, no doubt. Angering the wrong sorts of people. And so now, we pay the price. Careful. What do you want to strike before him like Bernardo was? Poor bastard. I heard Vieri took his eyes. I'd like to keep mine. So let's end this conversation. Hold. Let me send you to hell! Ezio, your uncle's under attack and needs help. Go to him.
Ah, the post. There you are. This is my plan. Here is men, am. Now we're gonna have to. My brothers and I will deal with these guys. I want you to go on ahead and root out that snake. See that justice is served. It's settled. Vieri, you will remain here to coordinate the mercenary. Francesco will organize our forces in the city and send word when it's time to strike. Jacopo, your job is to calm the citizens once the deed is done. What of that Ubriacone Mario? He continues to harass my forces, and I fear he'll discover what we intend. He's always been trouble, just like that bastardo brother of his. Then let me reunite them, father. There will be plenty of time to clean up the refuti when we're finished. Now, is there anything else? Muy bien. May the father of understanding guide you. May, May the, the father, father of, of understanding, understanding guide you. Comandante! Comandante! What? Mario Auditore has invaded the city. He comes for you. <laughs> then let's not keep him waiting. What are you and your allies planning? Is this what my father discovered? Is this why he was killed? I'm sorry. What are you hoping for a confession? Pezzo di merda! Vorrei solo che avesse sofferto di più! Hai avuto la fine che meritavi! Spero che pro... Enough, Ezio! Show some respect. Respect? After all that's happened... Do you think he would have shown either of us such kindness? You are not Fieri. Do not become him. Che la morte ti dia le pace che cercavi. Requiesca in pace. Take this. Read it when you have the time. Our work here is finished. Let us return to the villa. Messer Francesco, I have done as requested and spoken with your son. I agree with your assessment, though only in part. Yes, Pieri is brash and prone to act without forethought. And he has a habit of treating the mercenari like playthings. I have received reports of at least three men being disfigured as a result. But I do not think him, as you put it beyond repair. Rather, I believe the solution to be a simple matter. He seeks your approval, your attention. These outbursts of his are a result of insecurities born out of a sense of inadequacy. He speaks of you often 
and fondly, and expresses a desire to be closer to you. So, if he is loud and foul and angry, I believe it is simply because he wants to be noticed. He wants to be loved. Act as you see fit on the information I've given you here. But I must ask that we end this correspondence. Were it to discover the nature of our conversations, I fear what might become of me. Yours in confidence, Fra Giocondo. Lorenzo has been wounded! Aprite la porta! What's the password? Polizia, open the maledetta porta! By the Christ's greatest, come in, quickly! The city is at war! Hurry! Wait. I am in your debt. Tell me, why did you help me? You are not the only one who lost a brother to the Pazzi. My name is Ezio Auditore. Ah. You're Giovanni's son. Your father was a good man. He understood honor, loyalty. The Pazzi thugs are storming the Palazzo della Signoria. We cannot hold them off much longer. No. If they get inside, they'll murder our supporters and put their own devils in power. Then my survival would mean nothing. I have to... Uh, uh. Francesco de Pazzi. Help save our city, Auditore. Kill him. Francesco de Pazzi. Brought up as a noble in a city captivated by the newly rich Medici family, Francesco was taught to hate the middle class and its social climbers. Dismayed, he watched as the Medici bank eclipsed his own and centuries of influence over the Florentine government slipped away. It looks like the Spaniard offered him a solution. Rather than compete in something as dirty as banking, Francesco only had to do one thing for the Templars, one thing to put the middle class in their place for good. Kill the Medici. Giovanni Auditore tried to stop Francesco by putting him in jail. But the Templars took care of that. Signori, I saw Francesco lead a battalion around the back of the Palazzo della Signoria. I fear he may be seeking another way in. Go, before it's too late. Do what you can! Swordsman. Swordsman. 
So you draw some blood. The men will make short work of you. Resist it! You're only delaying your inevitable and painful end. What do you think you're proving? That you're a loyal servant of the job? That shall be your reward. That's for your decision. You're tired of this game! Gods! Gods! No one's coming. It's just us now. Maledetto che il diavolo ti porti! Stami lontano! Now Firenze will judge you for what you've done. It's over. It's all over. Meglio essere felici in questa vita e aspirare a esserlo nella prossima. Requiescat in pace. Francesco? Jacopo di Pazzi, the money. This guy was the head of the Pazzi family, and he ran their banking business. An associate of Lorenzo de' Medici, he had nothing against him personally. So he hired four Templar hitmen to take care of the situation for him. Bernardo di Bandino Baroncelli. Brought up to hate the Medici family for the exile of his cousins, Baroncelli ran the numbers in the Pazzi bank by day, and murdered for the Templars at night. It was Baroncelli who delivered the first blow. Stefano de Bagnone. Known for his cruelty, Bagnone was trained in Rome as a Templar butcher. It was Bagnone who stabbed Lorenzo de' Medici in the back. Antonio Maffei. Witness to the sacking of Volterra by Florentine mercenaries, Maffei blamed Lorenzo. He joined the Templars to seek revenge. It was Maffei who slashed Lorenzo's neck. Archbishop Francesco Salviati. Convinced he would be the next Archbishop of Florence, Salviati was enraged when Lorenzo stood in his way. But the Templars were there to heal his wounds. It was Salviati who marched their troops into the city. Ezio, about time you got here. We found Bernardo Baroncelli. Ottima notizia. Tell me where he is and I'll see that he's dealt with. That's the trap. Lorenzo actually had him arrested days ago, after being returned to us from Constantinople. But he escaped. We believe him to be somewhere inside San Gimignano. Va bene. I'll see if I can't pin him down. How do you expect to succeed where the rest of us have failed? I have my ways.
You belong down below with the rat. You belong down below with the rat. Just need to take things one day at a time. He'll get bored, lost, confused, distracted, killed. It will be okay. And if he does come, if it happens, I keep moving. Never in one place for long. Only, only have to sleep. When to sleep? Where to sleep? The guard tower, perhaps. They'll think me mad. They don't know. I'll pay them, yes. Then what will it matter? Or they care about this coin? All anyone cares about this coin. Good for the Brotherhood, good for me. It's safer this way, yes. Yes, I'll ask, and then... And then I will be protected. We'll meet when it's time. And I'll leave this place. Free. In time. In time. Wait, what is that? I saw something. Another mercenario come to spy on me. No, no. Just my nerves. How to stay calm, knowing that he seeks me. I must stay focused, and soon this will be done. Soon. I knew you would come. Where is Jacopo? So you can do to him what you've done to me? There is still time for you to clear your conscience. We gather at the church, when a meeting is called. Mi duole dover giungere a tanto. Requiescat in pace. Ah, there you are. Listen, we've found Stefano da Bagnone. Just follow this road and it'll bring you to the abbey where he's taken refuge. Wait, before you go, take these. You can use them to create a distraction. My thanks, friend. in our affairs, you've another thing coming. But please, by all means, continue to delude yourself if it helps to pass the time. You speak blasphemy. No, I speak truth. But to deny his most exalted existence is the only rational response when faced with the declaration that there exists some invisible madman in the sky. And believe me, if your precious Bible is anything to go by, he has completely lost his mind. How can you speak as such? You wear his vestments. Only because they afforded me the opportunity to get close to the Medici. But you're right. I should look into replacing them after the assassin is dealt with. Ah, that unholy demon. At least on this we agree. They say the devil has gifted him with a 
unnatural speed and strength. The devil? No. These are gifts he gave himself through training. It is disturbing how unwilling you are to credit people for their circumstances. I think you would make victims out of... Now I will see who was right. Where is Jacopo? Nothing to fear, I suppose. They meet in the shadow of the Roman gods. Ora si libero dalla paura. Requiescat in pace. Salute, Ezio! Antonio Maffei has sought refuge atop the city's tallest structure, spouting scripture and arrows in equal measure. The man has clearly lost his mind. Making matters worse, he's posted archers all around him. You'd do well to clear them out before approaching. Grazie for the information.
away with you, demon. Have some respect for death, my friend. I'll show you respect. No, I will. E tu possa al fine trovare riposo, nel corpo e nella mente. Requiescat in pace. Maestro, it's with fear in my heart that I write this letter. The Prophet has arrived. I feel it. The birds don't act as they should. They swirl around the location. I see them from my tower. I will not attend our meeting as asked. I can't expose myself like this, or the demon might find me. Forgive me, for I am only listening to my voice. May the Father of Understanding guide you. Guide me. Brother A. Over here, Ezio. We found Archbishop Salviati. He's barricaded himself inside that villa. Take some of my men. Use them to clear the fields. Then find a way over the wall so you can open the gates. Ah. Command over my own army. A nice change of pace from the usual sneaking and stabbing. I like it. yours. I see you there, assassin. These walls have stood for a hundred years and will stand for a hundred more. Stop wasting the lives of your men. But then, but then, all that awaits you here is death. Turn back. Men, prepare yourselves. The assassin has arrived. I need to find a way to open the gates. I warned you to stay away, assassin! You should have listened! Jacopo. He knows you come for him. Emerging only in darkness to meet with the others. That answers when. Now tell me where. A fede dovrebbe dare conforto. Non pena. Requiescat in pace. Stop! Brother, as you've no doubt heard by now, he hunts us in search of retribution. We should never have consented, never have conspired. But what's done is done. And so I have called a meeting with Maestro three nights from now to ask for sanctuary, either in Venezia or with him or in Roma. 
We will assemble at the church in San Gimignano and travel to the meeting location at the appointed hour. I urge you to attend. Remaining here would be suicide. The assassin is relentless. We cannot hope to stop him on our own. But perhaps, aided by Maestro, we might buy ourselves the time to form a proper response. Guard yourself well. Firenze may be lost to us, but it does not have to mean our end. May the Father of Understanding guide you. Your brother, Jacobo. Stay my blade long enough to follow him. He'll lead me to his Templar brothers. I'll have more names for my least. Responsible for my father's death. <sighs> I'm sorry, Maestro. I did all I could, but the assassin proved too strong. Clearly. As the others would be here with you. To say nothing of the fact that Firenze remains in Medici hands. It's Francesco's fault. His impatience made him reckless. I, I tried to be the voice of reason. More like the voice of cowardice. You're one to talk, Signor Barbarigo. Had you sent us quality weapons instead of this garbage you Venetians call armament? We put our faith in your family and you repay us with inaction and incompetence? Then when asked to account for your failures, you make excuses and insult us? How do you expect me to respond? I don't know. It's all right. I do. Uh, uh, no. Please. No, don't. <laughs> Please don't what? Uh, 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 I can fix this. Spare me! No. What a mess. So sorry to have claimed your prize, assassin. Did you honestly think I wouldn't expect you to follow? That I didn't plan for it? We've been at this a lot longer than you. Kill him. I know you're only doing as you're told. So if you release me, I will spare your lives. Ha! Listen! Ah! Oh, <laughs> 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 
Vai, amico. Libero da fardelli e paure. Requiesca di pace. Emilio Barbarigo, titan of Venetian industry, terror of the underworld. Aided by his powerful family, he cornered the market through smart business practices such as edging out the competition and lobbying the government. He funded the Venetian police force almost single-handedly, keeping the streets safe from crime and his finances tax-free. Emilio claims to be a supporter of the Republic. The problem is, once you own the police force, voting becomes, well, inefficient. As does, you know, opposition. Please, enter. Your good work has restored us to our former strength, Ezio. We are ready to strike. Just tell me what needs to be done, and I'll see that it is. You'll approach from above under the cover of night. Emilio has posted archers around the palazzo. Kill them, but do so quietly. As they fall, my men shall replace them. What about the guards? When you finish with the archers, we'll regroup in front of this building here, and discuss next steps. Nessun problema. I'll take care of the archers and return to you. Then it's settled. In bocca al lupo. Crepi lupo. Well done, Ezio. Everything is going according to plan. As we speak, my men are replacing the archers you've removed. The way to the palazzo is clear now. But not the building itself. Emilio's guards still patrol its border. Use my men. They can distract the guards. Save you from having to fight. And when it comes time to storm the place, 
Remember what I've taught you. Seek out, Oizio. We await word of your success. After you. of cards is crumbling, Emilio. A minor setback. It will be dealt with. This povero Scemo Antonio and his thieves... Never mind then. It's the assassin you should be worried about. Why? Is... Is he in Venezia? He's been here for weeks. How could you be so blind? Unlike you, I've been busy. Someone had to provide the weapons to our brothers in Firenze. Yes. And we also were good that did. Enough with the parts. What is it you want, Carlo? Maestro has called the meeting. Three days from now at Santo Stefano. Very well. I'll be there. Assuming you still live. If you want my advice, I'd find a less conspicuous place to wait. Seta is a target now. Seta is a fortress. If you say so. Goodbye, Emilio. Cazzo, what is right? You, call for my boat. It should be close. When it arrives, load those crates and prepare to sail. I'll be right back. If Carlo speaks true, I must find a place to hide, just until the meeting. Then we'll deal with the assassin. He must be working with Antonio. That means the attacks... No. I've worked too hard for this. Don't they understand? There is so much less crime. The people have better lives. So some must leave. It is the price of progress. Why must the assassins always interfere? Like Giovanni. If he had just left well enough alone. It is done. Let us go. Yes, and quickly. Yes. Do not be afraid. I feel no fear, assassin. Only regret. I sought unity. Stability. Order. At too great a cost. Progress demands sacrifice. Non trova alcuna gioia in questo. Ma non c'è altro modo. Requiescat in pace. Sorry, we couldn't resist. Come. Let's open the gate for Antonio. Set has fallen and Emilio is no more. All thanks to you, Ezio. Go! 
Tear down Emilio's banners. Return what he has stolen from the people. Tell me, Ezio. How can I repay you for your service? Money's always nice. Easy enough. What else? Emilio was meeting with a man named Carlo. He looked to be a government official. Do you know him? Carlo Grimaldi. He sits on the Council of Ten. Why do you ask? What are you up to? I have a meeting to attend. Carlo Grimaldi. Emerging from his palace in Monaco with a craving for political power, Carlo quickly became a key guest at the tables of Venetian nobility. While his reputation for discretion earned him entrance into the back rooms. Here's how the old bastard ended up in the Council of Ten. While visiting the head of the council, Ignacio Contarini, Carlo ran into Ignacio's daughter. Desperate for help and aware of Carlo's trustworthy reputation, she confided in him. Her father had arranged her marriage, but she wanted to run away with the son of one of the servants. They'd been in love since they were children, and they planned to start a new life in Milan where they could be free of her father. Carlo suggested immediate action, an escape by ship that night. The two lovers followed his instructions, and as they climbed the gangplank, they were free. That is, until Ignazio appeared on deck. Carlo was rewarded for his loyalty to the Contarini family. While true love, well, see for yourself. It's time. You did it. It's beautiful. See. Now let's hope your idea works, because we're nearly out of time. Listen close, Ezio. You're going to want to fly from fire to fire. The heat of each one you pass over should lift you back up in the air again. Bene. Careful, though. There's archers out on the roofs tonight. Avoid those arrows, or it will be a short trip. I wish there was some way I could use my sword while flying these things. <laughs> well, you do have your feet free. If you get close enough without taking an arrow in the head, maybe you could kick them off the building. Nice. It's now or never, amico mio. Ma cos'è? Shoot! Shoot a flying demon! Don't worry. Probably just kids with firecrackers. Come. It's your move. Stop! 
Signore, don't drink that! You are too late. The Doge is dead. What? Carlo? Apologies, Signore. But you should have listened to me when you had the chance. Seems you have failed, assassin. Forgive me, Signore. I tried. Why? What was it all for? <laughs> Assassino! Assassino! He's killed the Doge! <laughs> It takes one assassin to kill another, it seems. We kill thinking it's best for us. Do we not, Messer Ezio? I do this not for myself. Compio questo sacrificio per il bene superiore. Requiescat in pace. You... You killed me? You killed me?! Marco Barbarigo. Although his brother Agostino was destined for greatness, Marco left his mark on Venetian history as well. A tyrant since he was barely old enough to walk, whatever Marco wanted, he got. There are records here for jewels, entire fleets of ships, all paid for by his family and all ordered directly from him. And then there's his personal life. Apparently, Marco's wife, Carlotta, used to be married to his bodyguard, Dante Moro. Dante was captain of the city guard, an heir to one of the most prestigious families in Venezia. Marco was supposedly his close friend, right? But get this, Marco decides he wants Carlotta. In the Catholic religion, marriage is till death do us part, and Marco's a good Catholic. So, he hires a hit on Dante. Dante gets stabbed three times in the body, and once in the head. But he doesn't die. He recovers with severe brain damage. Dante becomes like a child. So, what does Marco do? Well, he hires Dante as his personal bodyguard, and he gets him to sign a confession annulling the marriage. Marco takes Carlotta, and keeps Dante as his personal slave. What a lovely fella. I'm sorry, Ezio. We could not have known Silvio would cheat as he did. <laughs> you should have. Sister, you told us to let you know if we saw that rotting culo who stole the golden mask. He's on his way to the Doge's party. I will go. I can catch him before he arrives and take back the mask. How? By killing the poor stronzo? Yes. You know what's at stake. No. If you kill him, they'll cancel the party. And Marco will retreat back into his palazzo. We'll have wasted our time again. Steal the mask instead. Quietly. My girls can help. They're already on their way to the party, all along the route. They can help you distract him while you acquire the mask. Va bene. I can do that. The hand... Ciao, bello! Hold tight. Buonasera, signore. You made it. Marco 
was on a boat just offshore. He said to make a speech in a few minutes. Use my girls until then. Move with them to stay out of sight. Find him. Honestly, my brother embarrasses himself with this display. You have no right to speak of him that way. He's the Doge. He is Doge in name only, and it's Venetian money he spends. There are larger things at stake, and you know it. Marco was the one chosen to leave. Your father may have thought he'd never amount to may have foisted his political ambitions on you. But it doesn't matter, does it? Given where things stand. I never wanted to be Doge. Then it seems you have succeeded wildly. Power is more than wealth. Does my brother truly believe he was chosen for any reason other than his riches? He was chosen for his wisdom and leadership. And this is what he does with such wisdom. After a light show, he hides away in the palazzo while the city comes apart at the seams. And then he thinks some expensive explosions will make people forget all their problems. The people love spectacle. It's human nature. You'll see. Signore e signori, I present to you the beloved Doge of Venezia. Benvenuti! Welcome, my friends, to the grandest social event of the season. At peace or at war, in times of prosperity or paucity, Venezia will always have Carnaval! Well done. He's not leaving the boat. I will have to swim out there. They wouldn't try it. They'd be spotted right away. Then I'll fight my way out there. Wait! Tonight, we celebrate what makes us great. How bright our lights shine! Over the world! That's it! Your pistola! The one you stopped the murderer with. It's as loud as those explosions. Time it right, and you'll walk out of here unnoticed. I like the way you think, sister. I'll be waiting for you back at the Broughton, my son. We all know we have come through troubled times. But we have come through them together! And Venezia stands a stronger city for it. Transitions of power are difficult for all. But we have weathered the shift with grace and tranquility. It is no easy thing to lose a doge in the prime of his life. And to the cruelty of an assassin who still hides in our midst. Indeed, we all loved Mocheni Godir. He was a friend to us all, and he shall be missed. But did any of us truly love his policies? Did we feel safer under his watchful gaze? Did we believe in the road that he was guiding us down? Or were you beginning to be afraid like I was? Afraid that Mochenigo could not see clearly that he was not prepared for what was to come. Well, my friends, I'm here to tell you I can see down that road. I know where we're going. It's a beautiful place, and we're going there together. The future I see for Venezia is a future of strength, a future of wealth. We shall build our fleet so strong, our enemies will fear us like never before. We will expand our trade routes across the sea, bringing home spices and treasures like we've never dreamed. And I say to those who stand against us, be careful what side of the line you choose. Because either you're with us or you're on the side of evil. And we will harbor no enemies among our friends. We will hunt you down. We will root you out. We will destroy you. 
and Venezia shall always stand the brightest jewel in all of civilization. Not ready. We rarely are. Que la morte non sia crudele. Requiescat in pace. You must be exhausted. Come, relax. Ah, the savior of Venezia. What can I say? Perhaps it was wrong of me to doubt so readily. Now, we'll see where all the pieces fall. Enough of that now. You've worked hard, my son. I feel your tired body in need of comfort and succor. But I have such aches and pains, sister. I may need a great deal of comfort and succor. Oh, that can be arranged. Girls! <laughs> Silvio Barbario. Raised by wealthy merchants, Silvio was introduced to politics when his father was cut out of the family inheritance. From then on, Silvio worked for his uncle, his father's killer. Apparently, he had a knack for persuasion. Quickly, he became his uncle's advisor, proving his worth by discovering a Saranzo plot against the Barbarigos. You're going to love this. Before the plot could be carried out, Silvio throws an Easter celebration, inviting the Saranzos. There's a pageant for the children in the central courtyard, while Silvio escorts the parents to the roof. He toasts the family, then signals the archers hidden behind the courtyard windows. The Saranzos never plotted against the Barbarigos again. Fast forward ten years, and Silvio's living in his uncle's luxurious Venetian palazzo. According to the history books, his uncle died in bed. <laughs> ah! There you are. Is it done? Yes. All your men are in place. Bene, bene. Take this. I assume you know how it works. Find the highest point you can in the district and fire it from there. This signals my men to begin the attack. All right, then. I will see you on the battlefield. That you will.
Bartolomeo needs my help. Must return to l'arsenale. Salute, Ezio! Get a fucking bomb. I all mean! lead you straight to his master. My men and I will remain here and keep the guards from giving chase. Hurry! They're going to leave without us! the boats. I thought you saw the doge seat. Just a distraction. We were meant to sail. Sail where? I'll never tell. Cyprus is their destination. They want... They want... Non temete l'oscurità. Accettate il suo abbraccio. Requiescant in pace. Well done, Ezio! Silvio is defeated, and the military district is returned to us! Perhaps now Venezia might finally enjoy a bit of pace e tranquillità! We should celebrate this victory! I am glad for you and your men, Bartolomeo, but I cannot join. 
fear my work has just taken a rather strange turn. What do you mean? Silvio wasn't looking to replace Marco as Doge. He was about to leave Venezia, in fact. This whole thing was just a distraction. Why? That is what I need to find out. My love, I wonder if ever the day will come when these words might make sense to you once more. I am sorry for what I've done, and for what you and I have both become. Though we could not be together, just knowing you were near was enough. And now, with Marco dead, I may yet find a way for us to be joined again. But, do you even remember me? Or were the wounds too grave? Do my words stir, if not your memory, then your heart? It doesn't matter what they say. I know you're still in there, somewhere. I will find a way, my love, to remind you, to restore you. Love always, Carlotta. Caterina! Caterina Sforza! I know you're in there. I have something you may want back. Are you missing any children? And Ezio Auditore. What a pleasant surprise. I take it you would be the Orsi brothers. Ludovico and Keiko, at your service. Basta! Where are my children? Let them go! Of course, signora. We'll happily give them back for something of yours. A certain map and a certain apple, brother. See, a certain apple indeed. Or shall I slice your baby's necks ear to ear? Bastardi! You think you can threaten me? I'll give you nothing! You want my children? Take them! I have the instrument to make more! When you change your mind, they'll be in the village outside the city! You have one hour! <sighs> Katerina, no. I can't ask you to sacrifice your children. Nobody's sacrificing anything. Go get them back for me, Ezio. See, si. you have my word. The apple needs to remain in the citadel. Keep this safe. Keko and Ludovico Orsi. Bored with their leisurely life in the countryside, the Orsi brothers decided to spice things up a little. They started a money-lending business that was extremely successful, mostly because they killed anyone who didn't pay them back. Then, Caterina Sforza hired them to murder her Templar husband, Girolamo Riario, which they did in true cavalier fashion. They rode up to his palace, waltzed into the dining room, stabbed him in the chest, ransacked the estate, and left his naked body in the centre of town. According to Abstergo's files, Rodrigo Borgia, after escaping from Venice, offered to pay them for the recapture of the Peace of Eden. And, of course, Caterina's head. It was the Orsi brothers' idea to kidnap her children. I ask you, what has this world come to when the rich go so bad? Women are no wilting flowers. We may look pretty to the eye, but the eyes deceive. Just ask Babo. Grazie, grazie, Messere. But my brother, they're holding Ottaviano at the lighthouse.
see your boy walk again, Katarina? Give us what we want, or I'll throw him off the edge. Mama, help me! Ah! I don't want to be here anymore! Sit down, Marmokio! <laughs> Let's go, Katarina. Show yourself! The apple and the map, or your kids are crippled! like a baby. Where are your balls? Katerina was a fool to send you. Or are you the fool, dying for a handful of change? Was it worth it? More than you know. The maestro gains his price because of me. Mori cor golio. Per quanto vale, reguiescat in pace. Grazie, signore! What are you doing out here? I'm so sorry, Ezio. I'm so sorry. What happened? It was a trick to lower our defenses. As soon as you left, they attacked again. Keko Orsi, he has the apple. What? No! Where is he? We chased him out here. But the bastards escaped into the mountains. I'm going. Just last month, the Visconti bought 300 of my So, you have your prize again. Was it worth it? So much bloodshed. <coughs> A prize of such value. It will not remain yours for long. We shall see. Che miseria nascono dalla vita. Requiesca in pace. Ezio, 
Thank God you're back with us. Are you all right? What happened to you? I... I don't know. One of my guards had the luck to find you in the hills, next to Keko Orsi's dead body. See, that I remember. Wait, there was a third man. He took the apple. Who? He wore a black robe, like a monk. And I think... a missing finger. See, si. Katerina, I have to go, right away. Of course. Then you will need this as well. The map Nicolo spoke of. Your husband. Ex-husband, mio caro. He swore he'd uncovered the locations of all the Codex pages. You will recover the apple, but you will never find the vault without this. You know, there is an abbey in the wetlands near here, where I've seen monks wearing black robes. I'd start there. Now go. Find us a stramaladetto monk. I think I'm going to miss you, Katarina. Oh, I know you will. Girolamo Savonarola, a Dominican friar from Ferrara, this man took his job seriously. He saw the excesses of his age, the rich stomping the poor into the dirt, the priests selling indulgences to the populace, and he went insane. Calling himself an instrument of God, Savonarola descended on Frenze. His sermons sent people into frenzies. He demanded an end to all personal property, to all progress, a return to Eden. Knowledge became the enemy. And he could erase it all with the piece of Eden at his command. Books, paintings, musical instruments, he burned everything in the bonfire of the vanities. History unraveled as his legions took control, and Firenze descended into darkness. Reject the base and material. Seek salvation in the flames. It seems a righteous one, a form of prayer, of worship. And if others might gaze upon my creations and see something of the Lord within, well, would they not be also brought closer to him? And so I thought myself an altruist, a speaker, a preacher, a guide to those who had lost their faith. What have I done? What have I done? Your actions were not your own. But they were. My own self-doubt let him hold me as he did. I am sorry. As am I. Non è una scelta che compio a cuor leggero. Reguiescat in pace. Getting away! What the devil are you doing up here? 
Something is wrong here. Where is everyone? Ah, another challenger. Excellent. Savonarola warned me that some would oppose our rule. And so I devised this little trap to ferret out those foolish enough to play at hero. It's proven to be both entertaining and effective. Incoming, Charmo! What a spectacle! I wonder just how long he'll survive. Another a few days back. Who will pursue a dozen of my men? Oh, there ought to be Before enough of you left to marry! Every day without fear. Another of you approaches. None to bones. No grenades. Revolutionaries. Debates. I've seen you diamo questa faccenda. He fights for justice. Tell yourself. And do not be mistaken. These are lies. No matter what any of you say, you're all here for the same reason. So, how would you like to go? The glory. Distinction, fame, reward, spirit. So we talk. Because I expect it. Your validation with the death. Your regret. Again, for some old days. Did your father abuse you? Did other children teach you? Did a lover spurn you? If I had to guess, I would suspect a form of insecurity. Why else do you wear the hood? Why do you hide your face from the world? Self. I see these words are wasted, serving only to send you further into frenzy. You're breathing!
this truly who I was? So proud and cruel. No. Savonarola bewitched you. Did he? Or was it that I tasted the power and found myself intoxicated? I wish I had been stronger. As do I. Mirin cresce, ma non c'è altro modo. Requiescat in pace. You must not disrupt our work! Firenze is sick! It's our duty to cure her! How? By forcing our people to follow a madman? It is unwise for you to challenge those in power! Yes. Well, that is about to change. No! You won't take me! Savonarola will know of your treachery! Guards! Guards! He's getting away! Che vergogna! Ma che vergogna! Oh, no, 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 Things are better under... I was a victim. It's not my fault. No, you made the choice. He charmed me... with that... thing. Only because you allowed it. Lo faccio per il popolo. Reguiescat in pace. Omnipotens Deus, Rex Regum, et Omnium Gubernator. Omnipotens Deus, Rex Regum, et Omnium Gubernator, cuius potentie nulla creatura resistere potest, quid proprium mes peccatores Supplicitor te petimus, amanu inimicorum. I thought... 
he preached the word of God. I fear his sermon is a lie. I led my flock astray. It's just... I wanted so badly to believe. We all do. Pedro computer. L'opera di mio padre. Requiescat in pace. Secure those crates. We can ill afford to let their contents fall into the wrong hands. We'll see just how tough the holdouts are. We never fought to go without food. If they want to eat, they'll accept Savonarola as their leader. How the Medici family can still hold any sway in this city is beyond me. Oh. <laughs> To a new era, one of fraternity, equality, and justice. Your plague will. What? What have I done? You tried to force devotion. Sometimes. The people must be told what to think. No good has ever come of that. Benché il mio cuore sia turbato, la mia mente è lucida. Requiescat in pace. Nice try! Um, let my experience garnish you in the finest style available. Verdura fresca di giornata! It's quite simple, amici. If you desire care, you'll submit yourselves fully to our new ruler. The choice is yours to make. Continue to support the Medici who, as you know, have long since fled Firenze. Or accept Savonarola. Why fight it? Why refuse? He is a good man, strong of character and morals. He seeks to save us from ourselves. And saving is what we need. Savonarola came to us. We were mired in sin. Gluttony, lust, pride, avarice. Need I go on? You have spilled the blood of a healer. No, I have spilled the blood of a tyrant. To command such power over the body, between this world and the next, it seems I grew intoxicated. And now you grow still. La tua morte non sarà inutile. Requiescat in pace. I'm sure of you. You won't get far! I've seen him before. Not getting past me. Keep out of there! 
Your orders are simple. Keep watch over these fields and ensure no harm comes to the bundles of Fiendo. It may seem a mundane task, but it is critical nonetheless. Without this most basic resource, they'll lose the means to resist. They will be forced to stand down. Already. Many have fallen into line. They require clothes, food, shelter, warmth, and all of these things are born of death. I hear you grumbling. You think this post a waste of time? But you must understand. Our very existence depends upon keeping all of this secure. You don't believe me, do you? Let me explain. The Fieno feeds our horses. They, in turn, pull our carts, which transport our goods to the cities where trade is conducted. In this way, our economy is made to thrive. And then, there is the livestock. Cattle and sheep require Fieno for sustenance. You would have let your own people starve. And for what? Too long, I suffered their insults. They called me simple and low class. I wanted their respect. I'm afraid you do not have mine. Per quanto sia venoso il trapasso, rieto sarà il tuo sonno. Requiescat in pace. Non si passa. Do you hear me? Until you've all submitted and given yourself over to the prophet, Savonarola, this bridge will remain closed to you. I hear you moaning and complaining. You say you have things to do, places to go, obligations to fulfill. Ha! You have but one obligation, to submit. Why fight us? Why resist? The city is ours. Your precious Medici have abandoned you. Fled into the wastes to wallow in self-pity. Savonarola wants only the best for you. A city free of violence. A people united by faith. All men are equal in the eyes of the Lord. And so they shall be in Firenze. This is a chance for us to turn over a new leaf, to leave behind our miserable past, and return to simpler times. I am here to help, to lead you into a new future. Only accept our gift, continue to refuse, and I fear you'll have to contend with... You wear a noble's clothes. 
How is it Savonarola charmed you? Wealth and power do not ensure contentment. I wanted even more. And now instead, you have nothing. Questo non è che un atto dovuto. Requiescat in pace. People of Firenze, come, gather round. Listen well to what I say. The end approaches. Now is the time to repent, to beg God's forgiveness. Don't you see? These signs are all around us. Unrest, famine, disease, corruption. <laughs> These are the harbingers of darkness. We must stand firm in our devotion, lest they consume us all. I see you, Da, that you think me mad. <sighs> but did the Romans not say the same of Jesu? Know that I, too, once shared your uncertainty, your fear. But that was before Savonarola came to me. He showed me the truth. At last, my eyes were opened, and so I stand before you today in the hope that I might open yours as well. Understand that we teeter upon a precipice. On one side, the shining, glorious kingdom of God. On the other, a bottomless pit of despair. Will you turn back to the Lord? Or will you cast yourself into darkness? Already you stand precariously on the edge. Men like the Medici and the other families you once called masters sought earthly goods and gains. They abandoned their beliefs in favor of material pleasures. And they would have seen you all do the same. Our wise prophet once said, the only good thing that we owe to Plato and Aristotle is that they brought forward many arguments which we can use against the heretics. Yet they and other philosophers are now in hell. If you value your immortal souls, you turn back from this unholy course and embrace the words of our prophet Savonarola. You... Your mind, since it is your own. <laughs> Not all of us require deception to be convinced. I already believed. All I said is true. Nothing is true. Non è un compito facile il mio. Requiescat in pace. You've done well, Alexa. What happens now? Watch. 
Silence! I demand silence! Why are you here? Why do you disturb me? You should be cleansing your home, cleansing yourself! There are bonfires to see, prayers to be said, penance to be done! You will do as I command! You will submit! Find the ambulance, you! It can't be far! It's you. I knew this day would come. Please, show mercy. I have. Va ora. Che sia il tuo Dio a giudicarti. Requiescat in pace. Silencio! Twenty-two years ago, I stood where I stand now and watched my loved ones die, betrayed by those I had called friends. Vengeance clouded my mind. It would have consumed me were it not for the wisdom of a few strangers who taught me to look past my instincts. They never preached answers but guided me to learn from myself. We don't need anyone to tell us what to do. Not Savonarola, not the Medici. We are free to follow our own path. There are those who will take that freedom from us. Too many of you gladly give it. But it is our ability to choose Whatever you think is true, that makes us human. There is no book or teacher to give you the answers, to show you the path. Choose your own way. Do not follow me or anyone else. Roma beckons, Ezio. 
Let me know when you are ready to depart. You want to fight? You got it. Just be ready to strike when the time is right. Remember fight, your fight. training, man. Get your... Take long.
Another trader? Doesn't look like one. Now where is he from? Credo in unum Deum Patrem Omnipotentem, Factorem Celi et Terrae, Visibilium Omnium et Invisibilium. Et in unum Dominum Jesum Christum, Filium Dei Inugenitum, et ex Patre Natum ante Omnia Saecula, Deum de Deo, Lumen de Lumine, Deum Verum de Deo Ver. Genitum no... beyond this, but I'm not. I've waited too long, lost too much. Requiescat in pace, you bastard. I don't think so. of you to bring me the apple. Now give it here! Why a farty for today? <laughs> oh, is the fighter. Just like your father. Well, rejoice, my child. For you will see him again soon. You will give it to me. As you wish. Fascinating. An impressive power, this. But if you think it's going to save you, you've another thing coming.
You are right to fear me. You cannot stop me. I'll cut you down, assassin! A clever trick, but useless. You cannot stop me! No, you will not take this from me. It's finished, Rodrigo. Lay down your arms, and I will make sure the end comes swiftly. Really, Ezio? And would you give up so easily were it the other way around? What? Why don't we find out? Ugh! At last. And now, to deal with you. Is this place? Open, damn you! Open! It's over, Rodrigo. No more tricks. No more ancient artifacts. No more weapons. Let us see what you are made of, old man. All right then. If that's how you want to play it. What do you even want with the vault, Rodrigo? Don't you know what lies within? Or do you mean to tell me the great and powerful assassins didn't figure it out? Figure what out? God. It's God that dwells within. You expect me to believe that God lives beneath Il Vaticano? A more logical location than a kingdom in a cloud, don't you think? Surrounded by singing angels and cherubim makes for a lovely image. But the truth is far more interesting. Let's say I was to believe you. What do you think you'll do when you open that door? I don't care. It's not approval I'm after. Just power. And you think you'll give it up? 
Whatever lies beyond that wall won't be able to resist the staff and apple. They were made for felling gods. God is meant to be all-knowing, all-powerful. You think a couple of ancient relics can harm him? You know nothing, boy. You take your image of the creators from an ancient book. A book, mind you, written by men. You are the Pope, and yet you dismiss the central text of your faith? <laughs> are you so naive? I became Pope because it gave me access. It gave me power. You think I believe a single goddamn word of that ridiculous book? It's all lies and superstition, just like every other religious tract written over the past 10,000 years. Greetings, Prophet. It is good you have come. Let us see it. To give thanks. We must speak. Who are you? Many names. When I died, it was Minerva. Before that, Merva and Mera, and on and on. The others, too. Juno, who was before called Uni. Jupiter, who was before called Tinia. You are... gods. <laughs> no, not gods. We simply came before. Even when we walked the world, your kind struggled to understand our existence. We were more advanced in time. Your minds were not yet ready. Still not. Maybe never. No matter. You may not comprehend us, but you will comprehend our warning. You must. None of what you are saying makes sense. Our words are not meant for you. What are you talking about? There is no one else here. Enough. I do not wish to speak with you, but through you. You are the prophet. You've played your part. You anchor him, but please be silent, that we may commune. Listen. When we were still flesh, and our home still whole, 
Your kind betrayed us. We who made you. We who gave you life. We were strong, but you were many. And both of us craved war. So busy were we with earthly concerns, we failed to notice the heavens. And by the time we did, the world burned until naught remained but ash. It should have ended then and there. But we built you in our own image. We built you to survive. And so we did. Few were our numbers. Your kind and mine. It took sacrifice, strength, compassion. But we rebuilt. And as life returned to the world, we endeavored to ensure this tragedy would not be repeated. But now we are dying. And time will work against us. Truth turned into myth and legend. What we built, misunderstood. Let my words preserve the message and make a record of our loss. But let my words also bring hope. You must find the other temples, built by those who knew to turn away from war. They worked to protect us, to save us from the fire. If you can find them, if their work can be saved, so too might this world. Be quick, for time grows short. And guard against the cross, for there are many who will stand in your way. It is done. The message is delivered. We are gone now from this world. All of us. We can do no more. The rest is up to you, Desmond. What? Who is Desmond? I don't understand. Please, wait. I have so many questions. <laughs> 